Let's pray. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity. We ask that you give us your spirit to comprehend these very complicated issues in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, we are told, Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called and oppositions of science falsely so called in the name of science nations were locked up economies businesses were shut down everything was brought to a halt in the name of science healing diseases and so we've picked the various elements that were involved and then we are trying to subject them to biblical scrutiny so we can ascertain and understand where this thing is heading towards that is what we've been trying to unfold so we've looked at choice and coercion we've looked at natural immunity and artificial immunity and then the third point we've looked at nature's remedies and drugs i believe you'll be able to make an informed choice for yourselves. Now, let's begin with talking about another complicated issue. Now, for what reason were these draconian measures put in place? I want you to remember, let's go back, let's go back. Not the last reason, the first reason for which these draconian measures were put in place. Now, we will talk about that with this video now let's watch the reason why these draconian measures were put in place what was the reason when people are vaccinated they can feel safe that they are not going to get infected dr fauci says he has covid again for the second time in two weeks i started to feel really poorly much worse than in the first go around if you've done the right thing and gotten vaccinated you deserve the freedom to be safe from covid 19. this morning I learned I tested positive for COVID-19 as well. You're okay. You're not going to. You're not going to get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Hey, folks. Guess you heard. This morning I tested positive for COVID. Taking the vaccine, we can get herd immunity. Then you'll just stop the 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 exponential spread. Millionaire Microsoft founder Bill Gates has tested positive for COVID-19 despite being fully vaccinated and boosted against the disease. COVID is the villain here unless everyone is vaccinated. Well, like virtually everyone in Washington, Nancy Pelosi has taken innumerable shots at the coronavax because she's a good person, unlike you. And yet, and this is kind of a bewildering fact for those of us who believe in science. Pelosi announced today that she's tested positive for Rona anyway. How does that work? Uh, I, I'm fully vaccinated. It gives me some comfort. COVID has derailed opposition leader Anthony Albanese's campaign, something his Labor colleagues have called inevitable. What I didn't expect was to feel quite so overwhelmed. In fact, uh, it's a little embarrassing. I shed a tear because I finally saw that we had something now in New Zealand that could keep everyone safe from COVID-19. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has tested positive for COVID-19. I want to take this opportunity to remind Canadians to please get vaccinated. The most important thing is that you get vaccinated and not just for yourself, but for people around you. Mm. And I believe that I'm an example of why it's important to get vaccinated and boosted. Get vaccinated. So this is the reason that was given. And then something very important has happened just last month. Is it true that they could prevent one from getting it? Because that was the reason. Now let's watch this video. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? 
No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. And from that point of view, we had to do everything at risk. And having watched it, now it leads us to point number four. Lies or truth. That is point number four. Today, just last week or two, in Fox News, vaccinated Americans, a majority of COVID death for the first time in August. So you were, you were told that it is able to prevent one from getting it. And now the evidence keep coming out that that is not the case. And I believe you watched the video that the whole boss herself in admit that it was never tested. Is, it, is this not serious? That's why this other video. Well, even the zombies in Brookline aren't defending Tony Fauci anymore. He's been unmasked as the sinister buffoon he is. But it wasn't that long ago he was in charge of everything. And when he was in charge of everything, he told us repeatedly that if you get the COVID vaccine, you're not going to get COVID, period. We know that. And we're quoting. You become a dead end for the virus, said Tony Fauci. And so widely accepted was that statement that Twitter banned anyone who disagreed with it or even questioned it as part of its COVID misinformation policy. But it soon became clear that that itself was misinformation because of course you can get COVID and pass it on if you've had the shot. And in fact, that shouldn't be surprising because Pfizer, which made the vaccine, never even tested to see if it prevented the transmission of COVID. What? You'd think they would know that since Tony Fauci and everyone in the US government and everyone at your kid's school and everyone on television and Morning Joe and all the rest of them knew for a fact, but Pfizer didn't even know. And we know that because Pfizer executive Janine Small answered questions on Monday at the European Parliament, and here's how it went. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. Oh, the speed of science. That's the speed at which you're moving too fast to do science. And you just sort of hope for the best and yell at anyone who disagrees with your preferred and hoped for outcome. The speed of science. Rob Rose is the man you just saw on, on tape. He's a conservative member of the European Parliament. He's from the Netherlands, and we are grateful to have him on tonight. Rob, thanks so much for coming on. Um, did you know the answer to that question when you asked it, and were you shocked by what she said? Well, good evening, Tucker. Um, it really was a special moment. For the first time, Pfizer admitted that the vaccine was not tested on stopping the transmission of the virus when it entered the market. And this has massive implications. Governments m pushed millions of people worldwide to get vaccinated by telling them, um, by telling, telling you to, to, to do it for your grandmother. And they yes. tricked perfectly healthy young people into taking this jab using false arguments. And they used big words such as antisocial to saw an immense hatred against people who refuse to comply with the government's wishes. And even worse, many governments, including mine, actually introduced so-called COVID passports. These passports made access to parts of society conditional. Those who did not wish to get vaccinated lost that access, not being able to visit a restaurant or a gym all in the name of public health. Our governments love to t talk about institutional discrimination, but this was real institutional discrimination. Yes. In many countries, like the US and Italy, vaccine mandates were introduced for certain professions. Many people lost their job, their livelihood, their business, because they stood by their principles. Austria even had a lockdown for the unvaccinated because of this reason. The government literally 
imprisoned people within their own homes. All of this was based on the idea that vaccination helps prevent the spread of the virus. Otherwise, why should people out of society? But this has now proven to be a big lie. Even the president of, uh, for international development market of Pfizer now admits that there was no scientific basis to say vaccination would stop the transmission of the virus. And I find this one of the biggest scandals of our time. The politicians responsible for this will be angry that people are looking back at this time, but I won't forget what they did to millions of people. And if we are a democracy, we should have accountability. And that's what yes. I'm calling for. Yes. If we are a democracy, and by the way, Pfizer knew this. None of its executives bothered to correct these politicians, and yet no Pfizer executive has been charged with the crime that they committed, which is pretty unbelievable. I wish we had more politicians like you in Washington. Rob Rose, thank you for coming on tonight. We are really grateful. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Recently, have a study on the vaccines. This is what the report has come. Is it true or false? I leave that to your judgment. A new study conducted by scientists from Harvard and John Hopkins, currently in preprint reviews, that the COVID-19 vaccines were up to 98 times worse than the virus itself, according to global research. Now, fact checkers say that is misleading. And that is the system that we have put in the world. You have to go by the official narrative. Anything that does not conform to the narrative is either conspiracy, is either misleading, and then it is being trashed and removed and censured, and that is what the world is experiencing. Please open your eyes. And let's hear what Dr. Ladapu says after he was banned from Twitter. In fact, he was removed, his tweet was removed. Let's see what he says with Tucker Carlson. Just suspended from Twitter for posting a scientific study that Pfizer didn't like. Hard to believe credentials equal to any doctor in the United States. He is now the Surgeon General of the state of Florida. So on Twitter, he recently announced the results of an analysis conducted by the Department of Health in the state of Florida, and it found a, quote, 84% increase in the relative incidence of cardiac-related death among males 18 to 39 years old within 28 days following the mRNA vaccination. So that is a bombshell, 84% increase in death. So you'd think that would be leading the New York Times, but no, everyone's trying to make those facts go away. Twitter removed that tweet, which described the findings. Twitter also suspended Dr. Ladapo's account. Now, even in this country in 2022 under Biden, people thought that was crazy. So there was an outcry and Twitter later reversed the decision. But the fact they did it in the first place tells you everything. Dr. Joseph Adapo is the author of Transcend Fear, a blueprint for mindful leadership in public health. He joins us tonight. Doctor, thanks so much for coming on. Um, the response to this is, is shocking. You would think people would want to know because unless I'm misreading that summary, this is a big deal finding, is it not? Tucker, it's an enormous deal. I, t I talk to people and there's been so much confusion, as you know, over the past few years, that people have trouble sometimes even identifying when something has so clearly crossed the line. So yes. I ask people sometimes who are still, he you know, hemming and hawing about this, if this, if this vaccine, if it had been known two years ago or so, that this vaccine would increase cardiac deaths in young men by 84%, would they have approved it? The obvious answer is no, you would never give something to someone who was young and healthy and increase their risk of dying from, car from sudden cardiac death by 84%. But people are often, their response is, well, you know, I don't know, COVID's pretty bad. Yes, COVID can be terrible, but we don't give people medications that kill them. So there's been so much confusion, but yes, that's that was our finding and it was a surprise, but that's that's what the numbers show. Well, it's shocking and it has, I mean, considering, you know, 200 million Americans uh, took this drug at, at gunpoint, they were forced to, um, this has massive implications. There are 50 states, why is yours the only that... 
Well, I, I think, frankly, it's because we are the only one that's asked the question. And, you know, again, it's just a reflection of how many things have been so backwards during the pandemic. Of course, you look more closely at cardiac adverse events when you, you already know that the vaccine is increasing the incidence of myocarditis in young men by 10, 20, 30 times. I mean, that, that's what the studies show. So, of course, you should look for that. But instead, like you said, they're just hoping that somehow this goes away. This isn't going away. This is real. And, you know, and it's it's important. I mean, it's it's incredibly important. Every, every time we talk, I have the same thought, which is you, you'll be part of our public life and public conversation for a long time. So we're, we're grateful to get in on the, on the front end. But in the midst of this, we were told that it could prevent. That is the first statement that we were given for, for, to, 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 to justify these draconian measures. And it has been proven that it could not prevent one from getting it. We have been told, we were told that it prevented hospitalization. It has been proven it could not prevent it. We have been told that it prevents severe illness. Is it really the case? And then we have been told that it could prevent several things. And today we've realized that even vaccinated Americans are the majority as far as COVID death is concerned. They're in the majority. They're vaccinated Americans. And in the midst of all these things, not long ago, Bloomberg issued a report that 12.7 billion shots have been given and this is the highest let's read over a year into the biggest vaccination campaign in history ladies and gentlemen it is the biggest campaign that's never happened in the history of mankind but even reports shows that even the death cases the death for the past two years is no different from any other flu the, the, the result is the same it is no different so where from all these things it is heading to us somewhere because that is the right time. And the right time is connected to the third angel's message. Now, over a year into the biggest vaccination campaign in history, more than 12.7 billion doses have been administered across 184 countries. It is breaking all barriers of sovereignty. It is breaking all barriers of individualism. It is breaking all barriers of nationalism. We are all we all must conform to one narrative. The latest rate was roughly 7.07 .07 billion doses a day. In the US, 603 million doses have been given so far. During the last week, shots were administered at an average rate of 30,866 doses a day. Truth or deception? In John chapter 8, verse 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of himself, his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it, right from day one. There's a problem with the long term. There's a problem with the reason for the draconian measures. What is happening? Open your eyes. So this is what we've been experiencing. Did the lockdown work? John Hopkins' study refused the effectiveness of lockdown. It amounted to less than 1% of hospitalization. In the Washington Times, they wrote, Lockdowns had little or no impact on COVID-19 death, new study shows.